We are inside a traditional storing house of information. All the memories of the world, all the records of our culture have been arranged in orderly fashion. As consumers of knowledge, we have the privilege of entering the past, selecting a portion which we may think useful. We remain anonymous in the face of this vast accumulation. Our consumption has a pleasing passivity to it. Of course, no storage mechanism is perfect. We face a very simple problem the decline of literacy, which anyone can see in the latest test scores. Students who are ill at ease with language are just plain scared of poetry. They realize it's a particular and specialized form of discourse. The irony is that it may be the best way to help them sharpen their skills, but you can't coerce them. We have other problems of our own, of course. It's not simply the student's problem. We're short on resources and manpower. We cannot give students the individual attention that might help them over this difficult spot. And we also have not been really good at inventing new techniques in the classroom that might make poetry more attractive to the timid student. At Brown, we're trying a new solution using a system developed by a computer scientist, Andy Van Dam, which can take poetic materials and other associated things and store it in a cross-referenced manner which will enable students to have access to a poem itself, to background materials, other poems related, poems from the tradition of poetry, critical materials, things that will help the student to see the poem in a full context and understand it in its, in its roots and its ramifications. Using this system, uh, we hope that we can take some of the fear of poetry out of the student and also that we can solve some of our own problems of communication and innovation in the classroom. That we'll be able to put students in contact with one another through the system about the poetic materials and that instructors and students will also achieve a higher level of communication and a greater understanding of the materials involved. In preparing for the computer-based course, the first step is to gather the raw materials, the primary and secondary texts. The instructor selects manuscripts and portions of manuscripts that relate best to the central themes of the course. Then the material is organized, given an initial structure. The poetry course material is broken into 12 units, each of which concentrates on a particular poem. The students will have three sessions with each unit. At the first session, they will view only the poem which is central to the unit. At the second session, they will view material to place the poem in context. This material includes biographical and genre information, other poems by the same poet, and poems by other poets, which influenced or have been influenced by the central poem. At the third session, secondary source material will be added. After reading some or all of the material in each session, the student will add his or her comments to the information available at the next session. The instructors and students will all have an opportunity to add comments and questions to evaluate and critique each other's work. Each new arrangement of a text provides the opportunity for something greater than simple transmission. If various texts can be interestingly arranged, juxtaposed, fitted with each other, and played off against each other, the process of reading a text can be made concrete, and the text itself may no longer be isolated, pristine, and inviolate but manifold and pluralistic. This web of interrelated text is called a hypertext. The computer system we use to create and manipulate hypertext is called FRES. FRES, which is the computer system being used in the poetry course, takes no particular training in order to operate it beyond an ability to type. And we use the keyboard to specify commands to the system which set up questions, uh, insert comments, and browse through the system in a manner to set up dialogues. A dialogue not only with poetry, but also with professors, with other students in the course. This dialogue feature can be used as little or as much as possible at the student's own behest. And he can use initials of himself or of other students to browse selectively through a particular set of comments or a particular set of questions 
And furthermore, what is really exciting is he can blaze a new trail by looking at themes or images in a set of poems and entering his thoughts into the hypertext for others. This kind of selective browsing and adding to the creative graffiti, you might call it, we hope to use to develop a different kind of community with professors and students working together to develop a true process of learning. Using the system is a straightforward procedure. The student identifies himself and types in the session name and the unit number and then lets the computer subdivide the screen into up to four sections which we call windows. The main poem then appears in one of the windows and it is as if it were on a scroll. The reader can cause the computer to move the text in through the window. Now, when he comes to a spot in reading where there is a reference to secondary material, a special marker appears and a little teaser next to the marker which explains what would be seen if that option were taken. The instructor can control how many of those options actually appear on the screen, but the student has the choice of which to follow and which not. Now, it's a little bit like choosing a good Chinese meal. The student can stick to the tried and true, but we, of course, encourage him to be as adventurous as possible. In the same manner that he does browsing, he can also use the light pen and the keyboard to enter in a response or ask a question. We're aware that some students might actually revel in the gymnastics of a sophisticated writing and retrieval system like this. Now, we don't want to subordinate material to the system, nor is the system merely being used to provide an alternative to a classroom experience. What we are striving for is to make a flexible system with lots of interesting material so that we may serve the needs of a genuinely contemporary student. Now notice that an equal burden falls to the system and to the student. The student cannot be passive. The system responds to the student, and after a while, the technical machinations do disappear. But for the system to function, to really function, it needs animating human presence. I don't know how you feel about it, um, but being an English major or a humanities major of any sort, I guess, I had, I guess, some prejudices about using a computer mm. and using all the scientific jargon and all that, you know. I think, though, that I think the technical aspects of it introduce, it's, it's fun in a lot of ways to do all the little stuff that has no relation to poetry. And I've also come to think, since I've completed the course, that there is something aesthetically pleasing about those little green lights on, <laughs> on the screen, don't you think? We started out thinking of the hypertext system, the press system, as a way of organizing materials for the student that might be more efficient than uh, a combination of textbooks and library uh, reserve book rooms and all that kind of thing. We discovered, as we were using the system, that what we had here was a communications instrument of extraordinary richness and subtlety, something that changed the whole dynamic of the course. That was one of the questions I had about poetry. I didn't see how they could get a course that I thought was emotional and sensitive and mm -hmm. combine it with a computer, which yeah. I, I thought was so cold. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you said something about that before when we talked about it in class, uh, about how you read it out loud when you Right. When you can. Yeah, I started did, doing that. Did you? Did you find it would it help? Yeah, a lot. It sounded, mm -hmm. it sounded pretty good. One of the things that we accomplished uh, that I think is so rarely accomplished in poetry courses that it's almost an embarrassment was that we, I think in most cases, freed the students of fear of poetry. Their gains in confidence, which show in the way they wrote about poetry and the way they talked about poetry, were extraordinary. And this confidence is a direct result of all of that intercommunication. Well, there wouldn't be so much response and response to your response from the instructor kind of thing. It, no, it, individual it, attention. Yeah.
it, it kind of puts you in a position where you definitely have to sit down and say, now what do I think about this poem? Well, in another situation, um, you, mi you, might be, you might be given the assignment to prepare it for class and be ready to discuss it or write a, one paper, let's say, for the week on this thing. Here you really develop it and have to think it over and over again. I found that pretty right. helpful. I think one thing that really makes this course great is the fact that you don't have to go to the library and dig out all types mm. of research mm -hmm. materials and right. reference books yeah. and one thing and another. It's right there. Make you a little jump up from lunch <laughs> and you're all set. Yeah. Right. I like that. The idea. amount of material in there is staggering. Mm. When you think about all the sessions that we've had and all the jumps that are in there, it's more than you could ever even think of using. And I don't know, it amazes me. We've been getting more work from students than they normally would perform in comparable courses, I think. And I doubt seriously if it's possible to get more work from students without faculty putting in more work to meet that. Because the students have written so much, uh, we have had to uh, read so much and write so much in response to the students. If our comments on their responses uh, had fallen short at any point, uh, had been inadequate or seemed perfunctory, I doubt if the caliber of their responses would have continued to improve as it has over the course of the semester. Of course, in that respect, uh, demands a good deal of time. What we save on classroom time, we put back in in uh, response time on the system. I also find that I read much more quickly when I am on the, using the hypertext because I just know that I have to get through a certain amount of material in two hours and mm -hmm. I really force myself to concentrate on it mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. pace myself. Of course, given the kind of system we had, we know who used what and how much they used it and what kind of use they made of it. We also know uh, what kind of comments all the instructors involved uh, made. In, uh, in responding to the students. We just know much more about what happened than we ever know uh, what happens in any ordinary course. And I have a feeling that if we knew what happens in some courses that weren't taught on this system, uh, we would be appalled at the actual results of those courses. My whole attitude towards poetry has changed quite a bit. I really, I feel I can, it used to frighten me to look at poetry and I, I never knew where to begin. And I always felt it was, above my head. But now I, when I read poems, I, I have a general sort of a process about how to begin. And I think of the sessions and questions that were brought up. And I feel much more sure about it. And I really love it. Hmm. Well, I do too. <laughs> we can expect to teach much better and to produce students who are better readers of poetry and feel more confident about poetry. I think that's a sufficient justification for what we've done.